I'm Haley B. Miller, and this is Ohio Politics Explained, a podcast where you give us 15 minutes and we give you all the news you need to sound smart and impress your friends. Welcome back to Ohio Politics Explained. Today, we'll discuss new rules for ballot drop boxes, the current state of our congressional map, how transgender issues are dominating the Ohio Senate race, and why House Republicans owe nearly $2 million. With me today is our Bureau Chief, Anthony Shoemaker. Hey, Haley. It's almost Election Day. Getting closer. Almost. Less than three weeks now, right? Crazy. All right. Speaking of elections, let's talk drop boxes. The Ohio Supreme Court ruled this week to uphold a new policy for the November 5th election, which says Ohioans may only return their own absentee ballot via Dropbox. Secretary of State Frank LaRose said anyone returning a relative's ballot or helping someone with a disability needs to go inside the board office and sign a form. Voting rights advocates sued over LaRose's directive, but Republicans on the court said it's too late to change anything at this point. Remind us where this directive from LaRose even came from. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, LaRose has been uh, sounding this alarm about ballot harvesting forever that, you know, saying that this is an issue in Ohio, uh, which, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of of any truth to that. But so the concern is like people dropping off multiple ballots at once, you know, like um, uh, that somehow people are stuffing the ballot box. Um, and, And this is really a big issue for people with disabilities because before this they could have, you know, you say your son or daughter or somebody drop your, your uh, ballot off for you. Now you can't, you can't do that. You can, you just have to, well, they have go, to go inside. inside. Right. Yeah. It's and not just pull up and throw it in the box and drive off. Right. Which is convenient for a lot of people. And even folks who are just returning like their husband or wife's absentee ballot, But this did kind of stem from a lawsuit over the rights of Ohio voters with disabilities. In state statute, there's a limit on the people who can assist them with voting. You know, it can be a broad range of family members, but it excludes grandchildren. It cannot be a caretaker or a roommate or anything like that. So advocates sued and won in court this lawsuit that said that this limit is not okay. Federal law says basically anyone can help with a a voter with a disability as long as it's not their employer or their union representative. So advocates won this lawsuit and then LaRose turned around and issued this directive because he said there's still a vested interest in ensuring that ballot harvesting does not occur sort of outside of the framework of voters with disabilities. Yeah, and we saw this as a, you know, another 4 to 3 ruling uh by the court along along party lines and you know, one of the things that um was mentioned in the um majority opinion was that you know, it's, you know, that the court should refrain from making changes to the rules and LaRose has made this rule and that, you know, it should it should stick it's too late. That's kind of what the majority of Republicans are saying. Yep. So to recap, if you vote absentee, you can put your ballot in the ballot box. If you're bringing your parents, your husbands, your grandmothers, you have to go inside, sign this form saying, hey, I'm not violating Ohio law. Same thing if you're assisting someone with a disability, you have to go inside and sign this form. Our next topic is congressional districts. Issue one is on the ballot because backers think a broken redistricting system produced bad maps. Opponents disagree, of course, and say Ohio should maintain the status quo. The League of Women Voters of Ohio, which backs issue one, dug into some of the odd aspects of our congressional districts. So what do things look like right now? Is our map gerrymandered? Yeah, I mean Ohio is one of the one of the most gerrymandered uh states in the country. I mean, you could you could look at some past maps uh of Ohio and, and say they're worse than the current map. Uh, I think back to what they used to call the Snake on the Lake district uh that Marcy Capter used to have that connects downtown Toledo to downtown Cleveland. Uh so we don't have that one anymore. 
But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's gerrymandering. Uh, we, you know, some of the examples are, you know, Cincinnati being connected to Warren County. Uh, you know, those two um, areas have absolutely nothing in common uh, politically. But you know, that was done to make Congressman Shabbat's district uh, safer for him. He ended up losing it anyway. Um, but yeah, there there are examples. Uh, but one of the things that uh, we've seen lately is, you know, we've got five Democrats in the in the delegation now, which is actually one more than we had uh, we had before. Uh, and so, you know, will issue one have an impact on on any of those districts by, you know, dividing up cities or doing things that, you know, that's what the no side is arguing that, um, you know, that this could end up being somehow worse for minorities. Right now we have three um, African-American members of the delegation. Could that change? You know, that's one of the arguments that they're putting out there. A couple other examples that this review pointed to in our current congressional maps is the fact that Delaware County, north of Columbus, is divided up into two districts. And the city of Massillon, which has like 32,000 people, right has two different congressional representatives. So I'm, I suppose at some point in Massillon, there's just like you cross the street and you're in a different congressional district. It's, it's kind of odd. Right. I mean, you know, even, uh, even here where we are in, in our building and in, um, in the brewery district, uh, the street that's right next to us is between uh, Congressman Kerry and, and Congresswoman Beatty's district. So, uh, the thing that's really fascinating about some of this is like the Delaware County issue. Uh, that district goes all the way down into into southeastern Ohio, into the Appalachian areas of the state. Um, there's very little in common uh, with the people of Delaware County, which is a you know affluent suburb of Columbus, with the more Appalachian regions that they're just they face different challenges and different needs. Um, not to mention just the the distance, but the distance, the size of the district. Right. Okay, let's pivot to ads in the Ohio Senate race. We hear Senator Sherrod Brown and Bernie Moreno talk all the time about the economy, immigration, and at least in Brown's case, abortion rights. But transgender issues have become a big thing in this race thanks to outside ads from a GOP group aligned with Mitch McConnell. The ads misrepresent some of Brown's votes on transgender athletes and gender-affirming care. Brown's campaign clapped back with an ad this week that compares his views to Governor Mike DeWine, of all people. Right. I mean, the the number of ads we're seeing around this is is, is astonishing. And a lot of it comes from you know, just the change in the culture wars over the last few years, abortion has become less of an abortion and, and gay marriage have become less of an issue for Republicans to win on. And it seems that um, LGBTQ issues around trans rights and in and, and sports and, and things like that are, have become kind of the new topic that they're going after. And I talked to a professor from the University of Toledo about this. She specializes in LGBTQ politics and pointed out that this is like the only culture war issues where Republicans have voters on their side, or at least they think they do. Public polling has shown that voters in Ohio and nationwide have pretty complex views about transgender rights they're kind of skeptical of this idea that transgender athletes should be able to play and on teams that align with their gender identity. A lot of people seem to have concerns over gender affirming care for minors. But when advocates talk about these polls, they point out that there's so much misinformation around these issues. You know, looking at gender affirming care for minors, for example, most transgender kids aren't getting transition surgery until right. after they turn 18. So I think Republicans are trying to, you know, capitalize on that confusion a little bit, maybe in general and in this race, it seems. Yeah, it's a very, you know, there are very, very few um, the transgender athletes playing in Ohio uh, school sports. Um, 
but the amount of coverage that they're getting and and in these ads you you would you would think that you were talking about a lot of a lot of kids i mean this is um is becoming a i don't say it's kind of blown out of proportion but it it's making it seem like there's way more uh, um children going through this than reality and it's worth noting too for listeners who may see brown's ad pop up he is very much an ally of LGBTQ rights. His ad kind of, I don't know if downplays is the right word, but it really pushes a more moderate stance. And while these ads have misrepresented the specific votes that they have cited on transgender athletes, things like that, you know, he's been credited for his work helping gay and trans Americans and Ohioans and, so it's just it's interesting to watch him navigate this. Yeah, and you know this these ads are showing up all over the country, uh, not just in the Ohio Senate race. This has been a topic that Republicans um, nationwide think they can um, win over some voters on. All right, finally, let's discuss why Ohio House Republicans owe one point six million dollars for an office lease under former Speaker Larry Householder. The campaign arm signed a seven-year lease for a space downtown to use as their headquarters. Then, Householder and political operative Jeff Longstreth, whose firm also signed the lease, got arrested. House Republicans reorganized once Householder was out of the picture and argued they didn't need to pay for the lease, but... A Franklin County magistrate disagreed. Yeah. And, you know, the the other thing that's interesting on this is, you know, they reorganized um, as this Ohio House Republican Alliance and, and Republican leadership has been fighting over who controls that money, uh, which is usually used, obviously, for campaigns and now <laughs> might have to be used for paying these bills. Just another example of how... Republicans can't seem to escape Larry Householder. Even from prison, he's making the pay. And one more thing before you go. If you want to vote for Green Party candidate Jill Stein, your ballot won't count. There was a hiccup with Stein's campaign paperwork because she didn't choose her running mate before Ohio's deadline. Now, Stein has sued Secretary of State Frank LaRose, so we'll see if we hear any more about this. Ohio Politics Explained is brought to you by the USA Today Network Ohio Bureau. You can check us out on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Ohio Explained. 